Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. What's good, folks? Welcome to the Prolific Perspectives Podcast, episode number two. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about 10 steps on how to start a business, how to properly start your business, to uh, structure your business properly, to uh, qualify for funding, and to be able to uh, you know build, grow, and scale that business the right way. Uh, just a little backstory about myself. I started my first business back in 2016, and um, I learned a lot, you know, throughout that process uh, when I started my business. And one of the major things I learned is there were several key components to, you know, the fun fundamental foundation of you know being a business owner or being an entrepreneur that i didn't quite have you know under um under my belt i didn't quite know the proper way the proper methods to start that business and so what i want to do today is kind of create a fast track lane for everybody out there who's tuning into this video to find the the t the 10 key fundamentals uh to starting your business so you can kind of avoid a lot of the mistakes that i made along the way to be able to create your business to set up your business properly to structure your business properly so that way you can actually go out and get funding for your business. Um, and there's going to be several different shows that I'll make surrounding, you know, this particular topic. Uh, pretty soon I'll be having a couple of episodes coming up with uh, how to fund the business um, with personal funding or, you know, utilizing personal uh, credit to fund your business, you know, on a, on a major scale. Uh, different banks that, you know, you can utilize to contact or to build a relationship with in order to give yourself uh, an untraditional way of funding to, you know, grow and scale your business. But without further ado, I want to kind of get into the, the core fundamental foundations of setting up your business and structuring your business the proper way. So step number one would be to identify your business structure. I think a lot of people just starting out, they usually typically will tend to go to an LLC. Um, LLC standing for, you know, limit li limited liability company. And I feel like one of the best things or the best, uh, I feel like uh, benefits of having an LLC is because it gives yourself the proper anonymity and also it gives yourself a buffer in between, you know, anything that could happen with your business, you know, it could give yourself the kind of protection to make sure that nobody tries to come after you for your own personal assets, you know, during the time <clears throat> of that business. Um, the other ones you have sole proprietorship. Those are for people who start a business. It's kind of like a DBA or doing business as, but it's not, it doesn't give you any protection. It doesn't give you any extra, um, you know, muscle to kind of, you know, combat people coming after you with lawsuits and things like that, et cetera. Uh, the next level, uh, the next step would be a corporation. Corporations are typically for bi bigger businesses, larger businesses who are doing, you know, pretty well, who are bringing in um, pretty good numbers. Like typically, I would say most CPAs would say that you want to be making over fifty thousand dollars a month, you know, before you start to uh, dive into the corporation aspects. However, you know, I would highly recommend reaching out to a, a, a CPA to get, you know, specifics on what works for you in your state and your business type. And then also you have the partnerships. You know, a lot of people join in partnerships, you know, to create businesses. So that way it kind of mitigates the risk for each individual owner. And it gives, you know, each person the opportunity to have, you know, a higher reward with less risk. So I think that's one of the things that a lot of people tend to join into a partnership for. But, you know, just to get to the, fund, the uh, fundamentals of this particular video, I want to kind of break down, um, you know, the, the 10 key components in terms of a business. So step one, I would say, is the business name. Uh, a lot of people struggle with, you know, creating a business name. They kind of want to have something that's symbolic or something that has some type of um, some meaning to it. You know, it has some type of uh, personal meaning to it, or something that means something or, you know, it has a value to them. But one of the things I want to share with you guys today is with the, the advancement of AI, which I'm going to be talking heavily about. And there's a lot of other people out there, influencers, podcasters, et cetera, talking about this uh, AI but one of the things you can do is use AI to help you to find out, you know, create a business name, whether you have having a brain fart or you can't, you have a block and you can't figure out something that kind of resonates with you. You can use AI to do that. And I have a couple of links that I'll be dropping in the you know comment section of this video. But one of them, I believe is named name links. And you can type in just a basic one or two sentence description of your business, put it in there. You, you step through the prompts and it's going to actually, generate several different business names for you now what's cool about this what i find to be dope about it is that when you put the name in there it'll generate multiple different options for you when you click on that link you can then click on the link to see if the domain is available for that business and if it is then boom you got your you know you got your name i actually 
used this particular link last week to create two additional businesses um for my you know underneath my umbrella business that i run and it, it worked out like a charm i was able to get everything set up get the names and and, and, and get the rolling with it so that's uh, number one. The number two thing I would say is the business structure. Once you come up with which business structure you're going to go to, I would recommend going to your state's secretary of state to locate, you know, and identify if anybody has that name and if that name is registered under anybody else's name as a, a legitimate, you know, corporation that is uh, in compliance and that's that's running currently. Um, a lot of times you can find if you have a business name, you can actually if you have a business idea and somebody has that business already taken, but if it's not compliant, you can try to reach out to that business owner or the secretary of state to see if it's possible for you to buy that name. If your name, you know, if it's the name that you want it. However, if not, then I would recommend going ahead and just switching names and, you know, getting another name that's available. So that way you don't go through the whole process of getting your business, getting your business domain, getting your business website, all that. And then you come to find out when you go to register your business, somebody already has it. So that's another way <clears throat> that I would recommend in terms of finding out if your business name is available. What other step that you would like to take after going to your secretary of state and finding out if your name is available, go and check out if it's available on there, go and check out the uh, Dun & Bradstreet website. I'll post a link in that as well. You wanna check out the Dun & Bradstreet website to make sure that it's available internationally. Uh, Dun & Bradstreet, they track businesses all over the globe. So if let's just say, for example, if you had a business name, Tom's, uh, Tommy Boy's Toothpaste, and it's, a, it's available in your state. But then when you go to Dun & Bradstreet, you see somebody else got Tommy Boy toothpaste already taken. You might want to switch that up because as you establish your business and as you grow and your business starts to you know scale and you get to the next level, you don't want to have the headache of having your business being misconstrued or being mixed up with another person's business because that's a lot of headaches that could easily be avoided if you go ahead and do the due diligence and the research before you actually get started. So that's one of the things to go into with the business names. So next step three, we have making sure that you have a legitimate business address. And this is one of the things that I did not know when I started my first business back in 2016, that kind of held me back from being able to qualify my business to get funding, um, to get <clears throat> outside of funding and to be able to get SBA loans, small business loans, grants, et cetera. You want to have a business address. I know through COVID, there was a lot of banks and a lot of you know organizations that was letting people slide with home addresses because COVID clearly set everything down. However, now that, you know, COVID's a wrap, well, for the most part, it's kind of gone where it's eased up a whole lot. You know, they're back to kind of tightening things down in terms of seeing the business credibility, the credibility that your business have. So I highly encourage you when you do start your business to make sure that you have, if you don't have a brick and mortar business, make sure that you jump into getting a uh, virtual address. And a PO box is not going to work because when you go to banks and you apply for business credit cards, you apply for business loans or business lines of credit if they see a p.o box or a home address it's going to it's going to drop the percentages of you getting that funding approved by a long shot so it's better to go ahead and drop you know the extra i don't know it, it, they vary from i've seen as low as twenty dollars to as high as seventy five hundred dollars a month for a virtual address but the cool thing about having one is it gives your business credibility it heightens and increases the uh the uh the percentages of you getting approved for funding you know through the banks as well as for some like Regis, and um, this video is not sponsored by Regis or anybody else. I'm just dropping this straight forward, dropping the sauce to help people kind of eliminate a lot of the uh, issues and roadblocks that I dealt with when starting my business. However, Regis is another um, virtual address spot where you can open an account with them, set up your virtual address, and then say if you, for example, if you are a home-based business and you got some clients that you need to meet with in person, you can go and rent office space from them and then go and have, you know, hold a meeting in a professional environment. So not only do you look professional for your clients, but it just gives you a whole nother level of credibility in terms of your business. So, you know, that, that, that's one that I recommend. Um, and then the next phase from there would to be able, once you get your business set up and you receive your articles of uh, organization and everything back from your state, the next thing you want to do is you want to jump on the irs.gov website. You want to go and get your business EIN. Once you get your business EIN, then you, you know, you're official, like you're official. You can, you know, start really getting to the bag and making things happen. So the next phase after getting the business, you know, EIN, I would highly encourage going and getting your professional business website. You know, you can go check out GoDaddy and several other sites that have, you know, websites and business email addresses, et cetera. Once you get that done, when you get your website and you buy your domain and you have all that squared away, you want to make sure 
that you get a business email as well. Once you get that business email and once you get your business domain, you want to connect your business email and your business domain together. Because once again, it's a whole nother level of credibility that the banks and you know lenders want to see when they're dealing with business owners, especially new business owners. They want to see and make sure that you're establishing your setup and your structure properly. So once you get that done, the next thing I would encourage you to do is go ahead and get you a business phone number. Get you a business phone number. So now you got your business line is separate from your cell and your personal line. You don't want to have your personal phone number or cell phone number on any applications when it comes to getting funding for your business. At the same time, I'm pretty sure you don't want uh, clients from your business calling you, you know, calling you all days and all hours of days and night, you know, trying to do business when, you know, show you on your personal time. You kind of want to separate the two. So I would definitely go ahead and jump on getting that business phone number. You can get your business phone number set up on freedomvoice.com and several other um, sites out there that have, you know, business phone numbers that you can get to kind of separate from, you know, your personal. There's a couple of them based, I'm in the state of Florida, but there's a couple of them here in Florida that you can actually get, you know, your business uh, address, you can get your registered agent and you can get your business number all in one, you know, spot. And, you know, that's a, a great uh, luxury to have, to have all those different things that you need for your business all in one spot. So you're only paying one bill with multiple services. And before I go further, one other thing that I forgot to mention with you guys in terms of the business structure is you want to make sure that you have a registered agent. A registered agent is the person who's going to handle all of your business affairs. And when you have a business, when you start that business and that that business is an official you know, business that is in compliance and is, is ready to do legitimate business, you know, in whatever state that you're in, you don't want to have your personal information being exposed because any business is public record. That means anybody can look up anything about you or your business. So if you don't have a registered agent to be a buffer, kind of like a mediator or kind of like an attorney in between you and your business, then it's defeating the purpose of setting up and structuring an actual business to give you that level of anonymity and to give you that level of, you know, protection from the public record. So I highly encourage doing your research to find you a good registered agent in your state as well. I also have a link, you know, that'll be in the bio or in the video uh, comment section or description section that'll help you out with finding registered agents as well. And so those are um, several steps, you know, to getting your business established and getting your business set up properly. Uh, another thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your business phone number and your business listed in the 411 listing. So that way people can Google you and find you online, you know, and make sure that you have a whole nother level of credibility because one thing you want to do is if you got a business you want to make sure that people can look you up i know most people these days with the internet a lot of people ain't checking for 411 but for the sake of credibility for the sake of having your business structured properly you want to go ahead and list it on 411 so that way you can make sure when somebody goes to look you up you know they'll see that you're a legitimate business and that you're doing legitimate you know good business and and i feel like it's good to have that happen because me personally, I've had, you know, meetings with bankers and they've actually looked up my website or looked up, you know, different aspects about my business while I was in the meeting with them. So it's better to be prepared, you know, for that opportunity and not have it than to have the opportunity and not be prepared because you just never know, you know, what type of banker you're dealing with when you're dealing with business and you're dealing with, you know, funding and, and, and different matters that come in play when it, when it comes to dealing with a business. And so those are uh, several major steps that is very important in terms of starting your business and structuring your business properly. Um, in certain states and for certain businesses, you also want to look into getting a business license. A uh, business license is going to keep you in compliance because even after you do all of the several steps that we went through, you know, from the beginning of this video, you still want to make sure that you're totally and completely in compliance because you don't want to give your state or you don't want to give the IRS or Uncle Sam any reason to shut down or penalize your business because you weren't compliant. So another thing to look into is to make sure that you get your business license if your business requires you to have a business license in your state, in your county, etc. So I got some links for that as well on how to figure out, you know, where to get your business license from on top of everything else that we've discussed so far. And once we've accomplished all those steps, the next thing to do is to go get a business bank account. Once you get that business bank account opened up, that's when we start really setting ourselves up to start creating massive success and, and to get into the bag. And I, for the sake of time, I don't want to go too far into, you know, all the different aspects of, you know, the banking relationships that we should develop when we have a business. But what I will say to kind of give you guys a heads up for what's coming in the next couple of weeks is, when your business is structured properly, you are able to set yourself up for a whole nother level of funding. 
And when you have it set up properly, you can get funding for a business without it being two years old. A lot of times when you go to get funding from a bank or you go to get funding from a credit union, they want to see a business that was established for at least two years before they consider you to be fundable because they look at a lot of new businesses are as a risk. And a lot of people, if you're into business, you've studied business or you know business, you know that a majority of businesses don't last past the five-year span, the five-year mark. A lot of them don't last past the one-year mark. But banks are willing to lend to companies that they can see that they have been established for at least two years. And they also can tap in and see exactly how much revenue that business is making on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. And when they're able to tap into that and they're able to see that, then that's when they're willing to lend to you to give you lending you know, capital for your business to grow and to expand. Or if you're starting a business, they're willing to lend you a business you know, to take to the next level. But one of the major things that I kind of want to get into before wrapping up is how important uh, business credit is. But before I even get into business credit, I want to talk about personal credit. Because when you have good personal credit, you can leverage that personal credit to get funding for your business to fund your business. And I know a lot of people out there who start businesses, they might not have the money, they might not have the capital, they might not have the information that they need to get started. So that was the whole purpose of me making this video is to give the blueprint on everything that it takes to form and build and create a business and structure it properly so that that business is fundable when you go to the banks. But the one thing that has helped me from the time when I started my first business till now with my second and third, uh, about to be fourth and fifth businesses that I have going on is knowing how to leverage credit. Credit is extremely important when you're trying to start a business or you're trying to grow a business or you're trying to scale a business. And I'll have in a couple of uh, shows coming up, uh, several different banks who you should and try to build a relationship with because if you're a new business owner and you want to get capital to build, start and scale your business, I highly recommend these banks to go out and get you a personal credit card with and they give high limit credit cards. And that way you can utilize the bank and OPM, other people's money to fund your business. Don't let not being able to get access to capital stop you from starting your business because right now where we're at in the world with 2023, you got AI coming and there's already tons of businesses, tons of businesses going out of business. Um, I mean, every time I look around, there's another business going out of business, major businesses. I just saw on a report today that I believe uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is filing for bankruptcy. They're going out of business. I've heard of Amazon uh, el eliminating hundreds of thousands of jobs. Tons of businesses are eliminating tons, tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of jobs. And so now is as uh, good as time as ever to start a business to make sure that you have multiple streams of income and to make sure that one stream of income isn't your only stream of income because one stream of income is too close to none streams of income. So with that being said, the power and significance of personal credit is extremely beneficial in terms of business. So just to kind of throw a couple of tidbits out there, a couple of little jewels and drop some sauce for, you know, what's coming in the next couple of episodes. I would say three business or three banks or credit unions to form a relationship with if you're looking to start or scale your business and utilizing and leveraging your personal credit. If you have a 720 to 750 to 800 or better, I highly recommend opening up an account and building a relationship with Navy Federal. Navy Federal has a strong reputation for giving out high limit credit cards for their uh, members of their credit union. For example, if you have a 750 to 800, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to get at least a 20K to maybe even 30K uh, cash rewards credit card from Navy Federal. And also, if you have a, a, a extremely strong built out credit profile, you'll also qualify for, I want to say it's the Navy Signature card where they're giving out on the high end 25K for this uh, particular car. So you're looking at right now, that's 50 to 60K from just one relationship with one credit union. Um, there's several others that I'll name that I know are giving out high limits. Um, you can also go and establish a relationship with Alliant Federal Credit Union. Alliant Federal Credit Union, if your credit score is in those ranges that I named, they're giving out credit uh, card limits for about 15K, you know, for a personal credit card, which then, you know, that's a nice chunk of change that you can use to leverage, you know, for your business. Another one that's doing that is Truist. Uh, Truist is probably one of my favorite, personal favorite banks because I have an extremely good uh, relationship with them, as well as I have a personal relationship uh, with the banker at the head of the branch in my location. And they're giving out 15 to 25K on personal credit cards. 
So right then and there, you know, with that being said, that's, you know, close to 100K that you can get on the personal side to leverage or build or create or scale your business. And I'll throw another jewel out there for y'all. There's another bank called PenFed, PenFed uh, Federal Credit Union. You can go to them and get anywhere from 10 to 12 to 15K on a personal credit card with them, which you can use to fund, you know, or scale your business. So the power of credit is real. Being able to leverage credit is real, um, but you must be responsible with that. And, and I say all that to say that this is just a untraditional way of funding your business or scaling your business in order to get your business up and running or in order to take your business to the next level. However, I have several more videos coming on how to establish more personal credit as well as how to establish and build your business credit, which then that's a whole nother level because you can take that business credit and get two, three times as much funding as you're able to get on the personal side, on the business side. Not to mention, once you build up a strong business credit score, you can go out and get funding on your business strictly based off of the EIN on your business, which means that means you don't have to be a personal guarantor. You don't have to sign your name for anything for your business to get funding or to get grants or to get loans once you establish a strong business credit score. So that is today's episode. Um, I just kind of really wanted to just share, you know, 10 steps to being able to get your business started and structured properly. So that way, you know, you can take off after this first quarter of uh, 2023, man. Let, let's get it. Get to the back. Let's be prolific. So once again, my name is Andre Polite. I am your host. This has been episode number two of 10 steps to start your business. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and checking out this show. Uh, please hit the like, subscribe, you know, button, please share, comment, et cetera. You know, if you, you know, got something out of this video, if it was some value for you. And also if you have any recommendations on anything business related or any show topics business related that you would like to see on a prolific perspectives podcast. So I appreciate all y'all for tuning in. This is your host, Andre Polite. This has been episode number two of the Prolific Perspective Podcast, 10 Steps to Starting Your Business. I appreciate all y'all. appreciate the love and support. Don't forget, please like and share. We out of here. Peace.